Hi everyone, I'm Lynn Hunsaker with Clear Action Continuum. Welcome to this Friday Flash. Today we're talking about interaction bridges. This is part of our Smoothing Silos series, exploring solutions to things in business that should be connected but aren't. Silos create gaps for customers' ease of doing business and for employees' ease of work. By solving these gaps, trust is increased, waste is decreased, and value grows organically for customers, employees, investors, and other stakeholders. Interaction Bridges helps you smooth assumption silos, goal silos, and handoff silos. In fact, these are foundational to all the others data, systems, process, organizational channel silos, and so forth. Interaction Bridges is a technique that's quick to learn. You can use it to navigate personality gaps in your interactions. It's a way to quickly leverage what you have in common with anyone to gain cooperation mutually. Different personality styles means different perspectives, motives, needs, and communication preferences. Diversity like this can be a great challenge, but if you approach it appropriately, this diversity can also be a huge strength toward your success. This is why you should learn how to bridge interactions with anyone. Interaction Bridges was, is based on extensive research by psychologist Linda Behrens. It's easy because all you have to look for is two things that determine anyone's interaction style. First, does your communication tend to be directing or suggesting? Directing communication makes statements that may appear to others as commands or definitive conclusions, but they may not actually be that. Things like, get the milk, or remember the towels, or we need to do it this way. Suggesting communication makes statements that may appear to others as observations or non-definitive suggestions, but may not be intended like that either. For example, we're almost out of milk, or it would be a bummer to forget the towels, or who wants to do this? Second, do you prefer to take a moment before responding to others, or do you prefer to think out loud? A responding role tends to pause slightly before replying or to have slight pauses between sections of their sentences. Your preference to take a moment before responding typically means your energy source is within yourself. An initiating role tends to think out loud, to be quick on their feet, or to speak loudly, rapidly. Your preference to think out loud means that your primary energy source is from others' inputs. Here's a caution though. Resist the temptation to judge any of these as better than the other. All four of these tendencies are useful and natural with possibly half the population hardwired for one or the other among each dichotomy. Which combination do you have? The combination of these two factors tells you which interaction style you have. As I introduce each interaction style, make note of, each, of which one best matches you. Also make note of the wonderful thing, strengths that each interaction style brings to any effort. You'll want to keep these strengths in mind as you use interaction bridges to smooth silos. The combination of directing and responding is called chart the course. Your press, pressing need is to anticipate and your aim is to get a desired result. Your core belief is that it's worth the effort to think ahead to reach the goal. You would say, I have faith in the process to get us there. You're inclined to keep the group on track and make deliberate decisions. You're focused on defining the process and your natural talent is to conceptualize an end result, foresee how people will respond, figure out what needs to be done, monitor progress, and give guidance. The combination of suggesting and responding is called behind the scenes interaction style. Your pressing need is to integrate and your aim is to get the best result possible. Your core belief is that it's worth the time to integrate and reconcile many inputs. You're, you would say, I have faith that we can make it all work out in the end. You're inclined to support the group's process and you make consultative decisions. You're focused on understanding the process and your natural talent is to define specifications, search for commonalities, encourage participation, 
reconcile inconsistencies, and produce high quality results. The combination of suggesting and initiating is called get things going interaction style. Your urgent need is to involve and your aim is to get an embraced result. Your core belief is it's worth the energy to involve everyone and get them to want X. You would say, I have faith that whatever emerges in, inter in the interaction will move us forward. You're inclined to facilitate the group's process and you make enthusiastic decisions. You're focused on interaction and your natural talent is to facilitate, catalyze and energize, brainstorm ideas, persuade, discover new ways of seeing things, explore options and make preparations. The combination of directing and initiating is called in charge interaction style. Your urgent need is to accomplish and your aim is to get an achievable result. Your core belief is that it's worth the risk to go ahead and act or decide. You would say, I have faith that we can control for whatever happens. You're inclined to lead the group to the goal and you make quick decisions. You're focused on results and your natural talent is to lead to a goal, articulate a vision, mobilize resources, accomplish through people, provide resources, execute actions, supervise and mentor. So which style is natural for you? You might find it difficult to choose one if you tend to use each style in different circumstances. But here's the key. The style that you use with your closest friend is likely what you're hardwired to prefer. To bridge your interaction styles with others, focus on what you have in common. While you're emphasizing your commonality, avoid the be like me or BLM syndrome by showing respect for others unique strengths and built-in needs. Look for clues in their communication. First, does their communication tend to be directing or suggesting? Second, do they prefer to take a moment before responding to others or do they think out loud? Starting with your, your two preferences, which one does the other person also demonstrate or neither? Always be true to yourself and particularly in times of stress, emphasize your commonality that you have with the other person. For example, directing communication is the commonality for in charge and chart the course. Your shared focus is on task and time. You both need to see progress and to know what to expect. So be transparent and mutually respectful and allow time to listen and consider each other's perspectives. Responding role is the commonality of chart the course and behind the scenes. Your shared focus is on reflecting, so help one another take time to consider implications. Suggesting communication is the commonality to behind the scenes and get things going. Your shared focus is on process and motivation. You both need to feel inputs and harmony are valued, so allow one another to share your comfort level with each other's ideas. Initiating role is the commonality to in charge and get things going. Your shared focus is on interacting, so engage one another in exploring implications. Outcome orientation is the commonality to in charge and behind the scenes. Your shared orientation is on control over the outcome, so help one another have some say about how to get to the desired result. Process orientation is the commonality to chart the course and get things going. Your shared orientation is on progress and action toward the goal. So help one another since momentum is underway. This is an example of a solve space in the clear action value exchange. This solve space guides you in bringing, bridging your interactions with other personality types. First, know your own interaction style. Second, emphasize your commonality with others. Third, respect others' needs. And fourth, leverage your collective strengths. Solve spaces give you an action plan that you can experiment with right away. It's an interactive template to help you apply nuggets of wisdom to your current challenge. Many topics like this are available now on the go in the Clear Action Value Exchange. These topics are in a wide variety of formats, including peer-to-peer Q&A, fireside chats, community calls, 
articles, study highlights, videos, podcasts, webcast conversations, single page templates, and much more. It's like a 24 seven mentor that you can tap into anytime, anywhere. Take a look at the Clear Action Value Exchange at clearaction.com. Next week, I'll explain how you can toggle across three partnering levels to right size your interactions with others among nine partnering modes. You'll learn how to recognize what's needed and how to toggle to the mode that stimulates the best results. Gaining cooperation and follow through from others, becoming more influential, and enjoying your work by smoothing silos. See you here next week for Friday Flash on smoothing silos through partnering modes.